What's going on, guys? My name is Julian Young. I am the host of the Blockchain Brief, where every episode we are interviewing innovators and founders in the blockchain and crypto space. Today, I'm extremely excited to have McLean Wilkinson, the CEO of New Cipher, arguably one of the most exciting projects in the space today. Uh, in addition, I also have Eric Pinos, our technologist in residence, joining me, so he can ask you some technical questions later on in the interview. So, McLean, great to have you here. Thanks again for taking the time. Great. Very excited to talk to you guys, Julian and Eric. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, no, of course. So let's jump right into it, right? Uh, mind introducing yourself, give a little background on the team, domain experience, and then what drove you to start this business? Sure. So I'm McLean Wilkinson, one of the co-founders of New Cypher. Uh, my background is with a blend of both software engineering as well as more traditional financial services. So out of undergrad, I worked at Morgan Stanley on the investment banking side doing M&A for technology, telecom, and media companies. Uh, that was from 2010 to 2012. Left there, moved out to California in the Bay Area, was very interested in blockchain and Bitcoin. Um, this was right around when Ethereum was getting announced. I think the space just ticked a lot of kind of intellectual boxes for me, both like finance, econ, but also technology and software engineering. Uh, so synced up with my co-founder, we did a lot of random projects, experiments in the early days. His background is uh, more on the scientific side. So he's a physicist and scientist from the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. Uh, also built infrastructure tools at LinkedIn um, before we started New Cypher. Very good. And so let's talk about the problem that you guys are looking to solve, right? Like how big is the market? Sure. So basically what we are is a data privacy layer for blockchain and decentralized applications. So if you're a developer and you're building an application where you're putting sensitive records, let's say medical records, customer names, addresses onto IPFS or Swarm or any of these effectively public file systems that anyone can go and look at and download and, and review, uh, you need some way to have private data obviously be confidential. So you need to have that data be encrypted, but then you still, in many cases, need some way to share that encrypted record with a valid recipient. So in the case of medical records, it's sharing those medical records with a doctor or hospital, but making sure that I, myself, I can't just go to my home laptop and download your medical records, for example. Um, so really what we are is this horizontal uh, access control infrastructure for anyone that's building a D app that's dealing with private or sensitive data. It's almost like, um, TLS or HTTPS, but for decentralized applications. Got it. And can you compare what you're building to something that's around now that might be, um, that, that our viewers might actually understand? Yep. So, so the core technology that we have is something called proxy uh, re-encryption. And fundamentally, it's just a more scalable form of public key encryption. So if you think of public key encryption as being very good for one-to-one -one data sharing. So I need to share some secret message with you. I can just encrypt with your public key send it to you decrypt your private key. It works very well, but it doesn't work so well if I need to share that message, not just with Julian, but with dozens or hundreds or thousands of people. Whereas proxy re-encryption uh, works very well for that. So it's just a, a much more scalable uh, way to share encrypted data with many recipients. Got it. And is there a way to, ex is there a way to do this now without new Cypher? Like how, how are people doing it, right? Or how are people thinking about it? Sure. So the way you would do it now is that sort of very non-scalable way, which is traditional public key encryption that I just described. So let's say you've built a DApp, you're storing medical records on IPFS, for example. The patient could encrypt the records, upload them to IPFS. They would either at that point, if they wanted to share those records with the doctor, they'd either have to somehow get their private key to the, with, to the doctor, which in general you don't want to share private keys because it's not secure. Uh, or they would have to download that encrypted record, decrypt it, encrypt with the doctor's public key, and then send it to the doctor. So it's this very clunky, uh, very clunky workflow that requires a lot of network traffic. Whereas with proxy re-encryption, that all happens uh, much more transparently, much more elegantly, and, and much more performantly. Got it. Got it. All right. Let's let's um, let's talk more use cases here, right? So. You obviously gave the medical record example, but we'd love to hear about some other exciting opportunities that you think will apply new cipher in sort of the near term. And then <clears throat> yep. So the medical records is a big one, uh, early vertical for us. A lot of projects uh, that are using us for decentralized medical records like Health Comics or Mediblock or IRYO, probably about seven or eight of those projects at this point. Um, another big early vertical has been the data exchanges and data marketplaces. 
groups. So you've got a lot of projects like Datum, for example, that are aggregating different kinds of data. It could be browsing history, social media data, genomics data, uh, self-driving car data. They're encrypting that data, and then they're monetizing it by basically selling it to advertisers or researchers or, or anyone who, who wants access to that data. And they basically use New Cipher as a way to conditionally decrypt that data uh, in exchange for payments. So you can have a smart contract that says, give this advertiser access to my browsing history if they pay five ETH, for example, to my address. Uh, so it's basically giving regular people a way to monetize their data as opposed to Facebook or Google, um, who's able to do that right now in a more you know, centralized setting. Uh, we also serve as basically the access control layer for a lot of these decentralized databases. So projects like Guzel or Fluence that are creating decentralized DBs and they can use us to control who can and can't query that data. Um, a lot of interesting use cases as well in kind of the IoT space, so projects like Sparity, which have a bunch of different devices that are streaming data. Uh, they're trying to figure out from the ground up like how you secure those data streams from many different devices. Got but it. fundamentally, we're just a horizontal access control infrastructure, so really anyone who's building any kind of B app with private data and this requirement to share that data would be a potential user of, of New Cypher. Perfect. Uh, Eric, why don't you jump on in here because I know you have a couple of technical questions you want to ask. Yeah, so I was interested in knowing about how it is, how, how is it that you're able to accomplish a, a key medical system without uh, some kind of central provider that's issuing this? Yep. So it, it basically comes down to this core proxy re encryption technology that we have. So, and the way that works is proxy re encryption basically gives you a way to encrypt data one time under the data owner's key and then delegate access to that encrypted data to arbitrarily as many recipients as you like. And then also importantly, revoke access afterwards. So a very simple example would be, let's say I encrypt some files. I store them in Dropbox or S3 or IPFS or some storage layer. Uh, I want to share those files with you. I can use proxy re-encryption to create something called a re-encryption key. And a re-encryption key has basically two inputs. So one is my, the data owner's private key and the other input is the recipient's public key. Uh, and this is a one-way function, so there's no way to get the private key back out. But I'll, I, the data owner, will create this re-encryption key. I'll split it up into a bunch of different pieces. I'll issue those, those shares out to the new Cypher network. And then the new Cypher network, the only thing it can do with those re-encryption key shares is to transform or re-encrypt or re-key the encrypted data from being encrypted under my key into being encrypted under the recipient's key. Uh, so at no point does the storage layer, whether it's IPFS or S3 or Swarm, have access to the plain text data, and at no point does the new Cypher network have access to the plain text data. So all the new Cypher network can do is basically re-encrypt the data. Um, the only people who have access to it are, of course, the original data owner, as well as the people that he delegates access to. Um, so it's basically like a, a decentralized key management service. So if you're familiar at all with like AWS Cloud HSM or HashiCorp Vault, it's, it's kind of like a decentralized equivalent to that, except without the requirement that you have to trust Amazon or HashiCorp or Google or Azure to do the, the access control and key management for you. Where does the token come into play in this world? Sure, so the token is used for staking. So basically the new Cypher network is composed of a bunch of different nodes that are performing this re-encryption service. And if you want to be a node in the, in the new Cypher network and make money via fees that users pay to the network, as well as inflation uh, of new new Cypher tokens, you have to stake the new Cypher token as collateral or security deposit. And so this basically gives you as a node an economic incentive to do your job correctly. So if you misbehave, you go offline, or you don't properly re-encrypt and instead you just get back gibberish, uh, you can get challenged, someone can provide a proof and basically slash your stake. So it, it's a way to ensure uh, correctness of computation via this like, economic incentive. And then one last question. So if I'm working on a project right now and say I want to use the numbers, my data encryption, like, how would I go? Sure, so right now we have a mock net. Um, so you can run it locally and sort of build against the API. Um, that's just on our GitHub. Uh, you can go check that out. Um, also, we expect to have testnet live sometime in March, hopefully, uh, and then mainnet not too long afterwards. So sometime in the spring is sort of our current estimate for mainnet. 
Um, but all the proximity encryption cryptography is, is built and working. You can look at that on our GitHub repo, try it out. Basically, the piece that we're still finalizing is building out the decentralized network, the token incentive layer, and sort of the, uh, the challenge protocol piece. Um, but if you're interested in following along, GitHub is, GitHub repo is the best place. Also, we do all of our development discussions uh, on our Discord. So that's open to the public for anyone to join if they're interested in following along uh, on the technical side of things. Awesome. Well, McLean, this has been an absolutely incredible interview. Thank you again for taking the time. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers before we sign off here? Uh, sure. Like if you're building a DAP, you're an engineer, you're a developer, and you have some requirement to manage hybrid data, obviously we would love to try to solve that problem for you. Um, so definitely don't, don't hesitate to go to our website or reach out directly. Um, again, Discord is probably the best place to reach me and, and any of our engineers. Uh, we would love to, obviously very interested in getting as many projects and, and engineers and DAPs as part of the new Cypher ecosystem as possible. Fantastic. Well, McLean, thank you again. Eric, thanks for joining us today. And then I'm sure we'll uh, be in touch very soon. Good luck with everything. Awesome. Thank you guys. Julian, Eric, have a good one.